Hey, this is David again, and today we're going to talk about rifling of barrels, specifically um, Glock, right? I've said before, said several times, I'm kind of a minimalist when it comes to gear, um, and I try not to modify my gun without a, a an actual need, without an articulable need. If I can't say, I need to do this to fix this, then I, I don't just hang stuff on the gun to hang stuff on the gun. One of the few modifications I've done with my Glock is I have replaced the original OEM Glock barrel with a uh, aftermarket barrel, right, from Storm Lake, uh, about a hundred bucks. And the reason I did that is because I wanted to get away from the polygonally rifled barrel that came with the Glock and, and go to a more traditional cut barrel like with the Storm Lake, okay? Now, the reason that I did this is because um, I want to shoot reloads in my gun. And I'm worried about what they call the Glock kaboom, whereas some guns, uh, some Glock guns have exploded because they've had buildup of pressure because of lead shavings in the barrel. So I want to talk a little bit about what polygonal rifling is. Okay, um, Basically, polygonal means, you know, lots of... Um, uh, angles, lots of lots of gonals, right? Um, and uh, it's not a new technology. It's been around basically since since rifling has has begun. Um, but uh, it what? Uh, hey, this is Dave with the Shepherd School, and today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, rifling, uh, particularly. We're going to talk about rifling of the Glock uh, barrel and the polygonal rifling that's in it. Now, I've said before several times I don't modify my guns without a stated need. And, and changing the Glock barrel with an aftermarket conventionally rifled barrel is one of the, the modifications I have made to my gun. Before we get into why, let's talk a little bit about uh, rifling and what polygonal rifling is. Okay, in conventional rifling, they cut lands and grooves. They cut just like cutting a, a bolt or a screw. They cut grooves into the barrel, right? And typically, they use a tool to do this. It just it goes inside the barrel and it cuts the stuff out. In a polygonal barrel, these cut grooves, these very dr drastic cuts, are replaced by smoother. Uh, bumps basically instead of lands and grooves you basically have hills and valleys that are uh, uh, more gently rounded okay now the reason that they do that is because the more gentle rounding provides a better gas seal so you get uh, higher velocities right um, a lot easier to clean um, polygonal rifling is not a, a new concept it's been around since since black powder rifles but when they started going to double base powders, the nitrocellulose smokeless powders, um, it was too much pressure for the guns, right? So they went to a cut uh, rifle barrel um, to, to allow to use the, uh, the softer barrels with the higher pressures. And also, um, that high pressure in the shallow rifling kind of squirted the lead out rather than let it cut into the grooves. It needed a more drastic cut in order to get the barrel, the bullet taxi spit in the barrel, okay? So come more to German engineers try to figure out uh, a more cost-effective, a quicker manner of rifling the barrels. And so this is uh, resurfaced with some, uh, some of the uh, uh, MG uh, guns from the, from the Germans. And basically what they did is they made a mandrel that had the rifling uh, in it, right, an insert, and they put it in the barrel, and then hammer forge it. Had these big hammer forging machines beat the gun around that barrel. Very, very quick process, and uh, um, it didn't remove as much metal, so it it made it a little stronger. Uh, barrel kind of stretched a little bit through all this beating. Um, now. 
there's some there's some benefits to that being that it that it's quicker, uh, cheaper, uh, you know, higher pressures, better bearing surface. Uh, but the problem with that is, you know, when you cut a barrel or when you hammer forge a barrel, you're putting stresses on that metal. Now with a cut barrel, you can heat it and heat treat it and cryo treat it, chiro freeze it, whatever. You can do some things to to get rid of the stresses on the barrel, um, so that it just lays there, right? But with a hammer forge barrel, you'll never get all the stress out, and so a lot of long range precision shooters uh, won't use uh, hammer forge barrels. However, with a pistol, we're not looking at minute of of uh, angle. We're not shooting paper plates at a thousand yards, right? You know, we're looking at, at minute of purple, right? And so that really isn't isn't an issue for a defensive gun, okay? So some of the advantages of hammer forging is that the interior finish is very good, and so and and it becomes work hardened, and so a polygonal rifle barrel lasts a long time, okay? Um, because it's beat into the metal, it, the the barrel strength is not compromised where material has been cut out. Um, smaller bore area, more uh, uh, bearing surface, less gases escape. So you get a more efficient use of the combustion gases. Uh, so you get a slightly uh, more consistent velocity coming out of the barrel, and slightly increased accuracy. And you know that's like revolvers are slightly less uh, prone to malfunction because they're less moving parts. It's really hard to quantify. Okay, um, less bullet deformation, so you get less drag because less of the bullet is is rifled. Right, it's cut. A reduced buildup of copper when you're using uh, jacketed bullets. So it's generally easier to clean. A polygonal barrel is generally easier to clean. Because it's hardened, you get a longer barrel life. Um, and so it's universally accepted for a lot of pistols. You know, Glock uses it, HK, uh, CZ, Carr, Walther, you know, all of them use uh, polygonal barrels, okay? Um, When we're talking about defensive pistols, though, we don't need that um, inherent um, uh, accuracy, right? Because it really doesn't matter what barrel I've got on my gun; it's generally going to be more capable of. It's going to be capable of more accuracy than I can can get out of it. Okay, um, but the reason that I switch barrels is the same reason that they switch barrels to to uh, cut rifling in the Lee Metford to turn it into the Lee Enfield. You know, the Lee Metfield rifle had polygonal rifling, but that higher velocity in the lead bullets, like I said, squirted the lead out and, uh, and basically just sent out a smooth more bullet because all the lead just got stripped right off in the, uh, the muzzling. So they, so they changed the rifling and went for the Lee infield, right? Um, Glock, because of that, recommends against, tells you, do not shoot lead in this pistol. Um, HEK, CAR, they've all in some way or another mentioned that lead bullets can cause additional fouling. And they say if you're going to shoot lead bullets in their barrels, to pay special cleaning attention to them later. Uh, if, you, if you do an internet search of the Glock Kaboom, right? K-A in capital letters dash B-O-O-M. Um, you'll see a suggestion of why this happens. Um, and, and some of the additional factors in Glock's warning. Uh, basically, in a Glock barrel, their chamber is just a little bit oversized, and there's a very sharp transition between chamber area and, and barrel area, and lead bullets can get additional fouling in those areas. So, if you keep shooting lead over time, right as it, as it first goes in, obviously that would you would think that's where your... your um, lead is going to be the most because you've got this oversized bullet being forced into this pipe around the chamber area and, and the, the leading up into the barrel that's where you're going to get the most uh, fouling. Okay? So you get this fouling, you get this fouling, you shoot, you shoot, you shoot, you shoot. Eventually what will happen is maybe the, the, the case can't fully fit in the chamber, right? And since the Glock chamber is a little oversized anyway to make it more, uh, more reliable, you get it pushed out a little bit. Now it's even less. Um, it's even less supported. It goes off. That round explodes. 
barrel constriction, you ended up shattering your barrel, blowing it up, right? Um, now, I don't want to go against the manufacturer, but I want to shoot lead reloads, right? Because I've got hundreds of pounds of lead and I'm just cheap that way, right? So what I did was, I went to Midway, and it doesn't have to be Midway, they don't pay me anything, uh, but any, any good reputable dealer, and I got one of these aftermarket barrels. This one happens to be from Storm Lake, but there's several manufacturers. I think it was $100. It's about $110 now, I think. And, and it's the same barrel, aftermarket, just slides right in. Uh, and now I can shoot lead and don't have to worry about the additional fouling. Okay? So, if you're not going to shoot lead, don't worry about it, right? But if you are going to shoot lead, this is one solution. Uh, because I know it's going to be hard for me to ensure that I perfectly clean the barrel each time I shoot, uh, right? So I went with this solution. All right, so I just wanted to share it with you because it works for me. And until next time, you can always catch online at www.tngun.com.